This video will demonstrate how to transform data that is skewed in some way. Very often we have data that might end up having a skew, and in order to do parametric testing with this data as, as an outcome variable, if it is skewed, it then violates uh, one of the major assumptions of parametric testing that we have normally distributed data. So we have an alternative or, or a way to try and fix that, and that is to do what's known as a log transformation of the data. Then we'll talk about two different types of log transformations as far as dealing with a positive skew or a negative skew. So first let's talk about the positive skewed data. Um, so the data we're working with is called days absent, and this is basically an outcome measure of how many days someone was absent from a work or school. And so what we first need to do is explore what kind of skew it might have. So we'll go to the Analyze menu, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. And then we are going to uh, enter in the variable of interest, in this case, uh, sick days taken. And then in the Statistics option, we want to make sure we're getting descriptives, including confidence intervals. And then under plots, we want to make sure we're getting a histogram so we can actually visualize what this skew might look like. I'm going to go ahead and click Continue, and then we click OK. So as we can see here, here's the mean of our uh, outcome variable, confidence intervals of the outcome variable, and then we can look at the skewness score. And we can see we have a positive skew here because this is a positive number, and it's 1.6. Now, we would consider this to be skewed uh, based upon either the rule of one, where if the skewness score is greater than one or beyond negative one, that would be considered to be non-normally distributed. Or we can look at doubling the standard error of the skewness score, uh, and if the skewness score exceeds that double the standard error, then that would also be considered a skewed distribution. So in this case, we, using either of those rules, we, we definitely have a skewed distribution here because the skewness score is positive, we know we have a positive skew. And we can look at the histogram here and we can see this kind of classical um, skew where we've got the majority of scores piled up on the left side of the graph and then we have a broad tail that tapers off to the right. And so that would be considered a positive skew. Now, the method we have of dealing with this positive skew, in other words, being able to normalize the data so we'd be able to use it using parametric statistics because in its present format we couldn't use it for parametric statistics because it violates that assumption. So we can do something that's known as a log transformation. And there's a couple assumptions we have when we do log transformations. And the first is that there is a positive skew and in this case we've met that assumption. The other assumption is that data points cannot be uh, negative, cannot have a negative value, or there can be no values of zero in the data distribution. And so how we check that is we can look at the minimum maximum score of our data set. And here we can see the minimum score is a one, uh, a positive one. So we don't have any zeros, we don't have any negative numbers. So we can go ahead and, and work with the log transformation. I'll talk a little bit later about how we deal with data distributions that do have negative numbers or zeros and how we can still perform a log transformation with those types of data. So how we can transform this data then, and let's let's quickly go back to the data. We've got these, these numbers of days absent and we want to be able to transform that data into a format that is usable for parametric testing. So we need to go to the transform menu and we're going to compute a new variable. And let me reset this here. So what we have to do first of all is designate what we, what we want to name our new variable. We're going to take this days absent data and transform it into a new log transform variable. So we need to give it a name. So it's easiest to give it a very similar name to the original variable, but to include in that name the fact that we're doing a log transformation. And the type of transformation we're going to do is what's known as a log base 10 transformation. This is usually done when we have um, data that's measuring something numeric, uh, days absent, for example, body fat percentage, um, height, and so on. We can do a log 10 transformation. Well, very often we can also use what's known as a log natural transformation, and this is typically done when we've got data that's expressed in percentage 
or data that's expressed in some sort of a change, whether it's an improvement or a, a decrease in performance. So in, in the health sciences, we very often do these log transformations, and typically we're using either log 10 or log natural. Because we've got a distinct outcome here, days absent, we're going to use the log 10 transformation. So that's why I'm naming the variable uh, days absent log 10. Okay, so how we do this transformation is we need to go to the function group and choose arithmetic. And then we can see the function called log 10, LG10, and it gives you a description of what that function is here in this box. So once we've uh, selected that log 10, we're going to move it up into the numeric expression box. And then you'll see there's a little question mark here in a highlighted section. This is where we need to place the variable that we want to do the log transformation on. So again, sick days is our variable that we want to transform. So we select that and then move it over into the numeric expressions box. So now SPSS knows it wants to do a log 10 transformation on this variable days absent. Once we've done made these selections, we click OK. And we'll close this really quickly. So we can go back and see that we have created this new variable days absent log 10. So this is the, the variable we had here originally that's highlighted in hell. We have this new variable once the data has been transformed. So the next thing we want to do is see if we've actually corrected that skew, that positive skew, and moved it back closer to a skewness score of zero or closer to a normal distribution. Okay, so how we do that, we go back to the Analyze menu, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. Okay, and we need to take that original variable out and put in our new variable, which is our days absent log 10. Okay, make sure that we're going to get descriptive statistics, and we are. Make sure we're going to get that histogram so we can visualize it, and we have done that. All right, then we click OK. All right, and we can see here that now we have um, corrected the skew. It's, it's actually overcorrected slightly, which is not unusual to see going from a large positive skew to a small to moderate negative skew, and that's happened. We've moved to a negative skew of 0.742, but now it's less than one. Uh, it's also less than the standard error uh, doubled. And so now we've essentially created a, a more normal distribution. It's not perfectly normal, but it is more normal compared to where it was before. And if we look at our histogram again, we can see we've got a more normal distribution here. We've got a little bit of piling up here on the left, but we still have a much more normal looking distribution than before. Remember we started out with a skewness score of positive 1.6 and now we're to a skewness score of, of negative 0.74. So again it's not unusual to see that kind of overcorrection. So that's how we can, so now this, this data, this transformed data, can now be used in a parametric test like a t-test or an ANOVA or a multiple regression. So now we, we can We've met that assumption of normality, and we can analyze it the way we would normally. Okay, now let's talk quickly about how we would deal with a situation in which we had data that um, had that zero or a negative number. Let me get rid of these other variables first, kind of unclutter ourselves here. So what happens if this days absent variable that we worked with actually had some scores of zero? So I'm going to change a couple of these scores just uh, for demonstration purposes, and let's just change these two scores. Okay, So how would we be able to transform this data now that it's got zeros? It's, it violates one of those assumptions. Well, what we do is we'd have to, again, we'd have to do a, a, a mini transformation um, before we could then do the log transformation. And so what we end up doing is we end up, uh, again, let me reset this, we end up adding a constant to all the scores in the score distribution so that we can move the lowest score up to at least a 1. So we'd like the lowest score when we do log transformation to be a 1. Um, and so if we have zeros, we need to add um, at least 1, and it's an arbitrary number, add at least 1 to those scores so that we can move the lowest score up to a score of 1. So again, we can create this, this we can still do the log transformation simultaneously. So let's let's um, create this this new log transform variable. Okay, and we can still do the arithmetic function, and we're going to choose log 10 and move it up there. 
And then our sick days taken is going to be moved in there as well. But what we can do now is within that expression, next to days absent, we can tell SPSS to add a score of 1 to all of the scores in the distribution and then do the log transformation. So our lowest score, we know is because we just changed it, our lowest score was a 0. So we want to bring the lowest score up to a plus 1, so we add a plus 1 to all the scores, days absent, and then do the log transformation. Now if we had negative scores, maybe we had a negative 2, then we might need to add 3 to all the scores to bring the lowest score up to a positive 1. Okay, so that's how we can do this kind of mini transformation um, to data that doesn't meet the assumption of a log transformation, and then we can go ahead and, and do the log transformation. So that's how we would, we would adjust those scores if they did not meet the assumptions. Okay, so now let's talk about a data set that has a negative skew and how, <clears throat> how we would deal with that, excuse me. So first of all, um, let's go to our Analyze menu and let's take a look at uh, a data set that's named Speed or a variable named Speed. And it's speed in miles per hour. And so the first thing we want to do is determine if what kind of skew this has and to what degree the skew is present. So we move Speed over into our dependent list box. Make sure we have descriptive statistics chosen. Make sure we have our histogram chosen. All right, and then we click OK. Okay, so we can, what we have here are our mean, our mean uh, miles per hour, and here's our confidence intervals for that mean. Uh, and we go to our skewness score, and we can see here we have a negative number, a negative skew, and it's a fairly large skew, 2.0, which again violates that rule of one and certainly violates that double the standard error. So we definitely have a non-normal distribution here, a negative skew. So this does not meet that assumption of normality, so we wouldn't be able to do any parametric statistics with this particular variable. And if we go down the histogram, we can again see that we have kind of this classic negative skew where the majority of scores are kind of piled up around the right side of the graph, and then we have this long tapering tail off to the left. So we definitely have a negative skew here. So if we wish to transform this data, because it's negatively skewed, we can't do the normal log transformation that we did with our previous variable. So what we need to do is go through a process called reflection, where we're going to reflect the data or kind of move the data to the left. Um, and then that way we can then do the log transformation. Let me show you how this will work. We go back again to the transform menu, compute variable, and again we, we come up with our, our new target variable that we're going to create. In this case it's going to be speed, and I'm going to put a capital R in there to indicate that I've reflected or I'm going to reflect the speed data and then do the log 10 transformation on it. So my new variable would be called speed R log 10. All right, now we're still going to do the log 10 transformation, but within this formula, we're going to build in this reflection of the data that we need to do. So let's first choose our log 10 formula and move that up into the numeric expressions box. And we know we want to do speed. Okay, so we want to move that in there. So how we reflect this speed data is we take the highest score in this variable add 1 to that highest score and then we're going to take that number and from it we're going to subtract the raw data in the speed variable so what we do is we go to our back to our descriptive data here and find out what the maximum score is in our data and you can see here it's 90 so we want to add a 1 to that so we get 91 and then we're going to subtract each individual speed score from 91. So again, we're doing kind of a, like a mini transformation or, or what we call a reflection to each individual score in the data set. And then the log 10 transformation will be performed. So within this numeric expression, I want to take that 91 number, so 91 minus speed. So for each speed score, each individual speed score, it's going to subtract that score from 91 and then do the log transformation. All right, then we go ahead and click OK. 
and as we go back to our data file we can see again we've got a new variable speed reflected log 10. All right, now let's see if we've corrected the skew that we originally had. So we go back to the descriptive statistics, explore, and again we want to put that new variable we created in here, speed log 10, move that in, make sure we've got our descriptives, yes, make sure we've got our plots, which should still be the same, and then we click OK. So let's go back to our original speed histogram, and we've got that negative skew, and we had that skewness score of minus 2.05. So let's now go to our new skewness score for our transformed variable. And you can see now we still have a negative skew, but it's much, much smaller. It's only 0.2. So that's a very small skewness score. It certainly meets our rule of one. It is also going to be less than the double of the standard error. So now we have a much more normal distribution. And if we look at the histogram, we can see that as well. Not perfectly normal, but much more normal looking than what we had previously. So now we've, we've been able to correct this distribution, and it is more normal, fits our criteria for what a normal distribution is. And so now we'd be able to do some parametric testing on this particular uh, variable, t-testing or ANOVAs. So to review, what we've learned how to do is we've learned to look at skewed data, whether it be positive, positively skewed or negatively skewed. We've learned how to do a log transformation of this data to make it more normal. And so depending on whether or not we have positive data, then we can do a simple log 10 transformation, but of course making sure we don't have any zeros or negative numbers, we need to correct for that if that's the case. If we have a negative skew, we can reflect the data, and then we can do the same log 10 transformation on that data to make it more normal.